I'm Rob Fleischer. I'm a senior scientist and the head of the Center for Conservation and Evolutionary Genetics, which is part of the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute. Science can be really surprising at times, uh, even about things that we think we know all about, like white-tailed deer that live in our local forests and backyards. In this case, what we found was a malaria parasite in a mosquito. While we were surveying for bird malaria, we found that this was a mammalian malaria parasite. And in fact, by looking at a blood meal, we found that it was, came from a white-tailed deer. We then surveyed white-tailed deer throughout the United States and other deer and related species of ungulates. And we found that this parasite was only found in maybe a quarter of the deer in the eastern United States, something that we had totally, was totally unexpected. The likelihood of it going into a primate like us, a human, um, is almost nil. Um, it's very unlikely. This discovery is important for a number of reasons. Uh, foremost, um, that we can still discover new things, new parasites, even in our own backyard and common species. Second, this may be a parasite that seems to be benign right now in deer. It doesn't seem to be spread to other species, but it is potentially a health risk if it does go into other species. For example, some of the rare and endangered antelope and other ungulates that we uh, have in captivity at, this, at the National Zoo and other zoos. Or it could even become a health risk for deer, uh, given that um, these things do become modified over time. They can emerge. And also, they, in combination with other diseases, they can become more of a problem. Well, we have some open questions. I mean, the first is, how, what is the effect of this uh, parasite on white-tailed deer? We don't really know that. We need to look into that in more detail because right now it looks like it's pretty benign, but it may be that at certain stages of life of the deer, like when they're fawns, it may be more damaging. So there's implications from that that we'd like to address. In addition, um, we, are, we need to confirm that it is in fact an endemic uh, New World malaria parasite because it's the only one found in mammals. Um, and if that's the case, how did it get here? When did it get here? We want to do more work to try to figure that out. This has been a real team effort uh, with uh, members of our center, Center for Conservation and Evolutionary Genetics, working closely with members of the Conservation Ecology Center, the Department of Conservation Medicine, the Department of Pathology, along with many collaborators from outside the Smithsonian. My name is Ellen Martinson, and I'm a research fellow at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute's Center for Conservation and Evolutionary Genetics. What we found was really surprising. So while we were screening mosquitoes at the National Zoo for bird malaria parasites, we found a mammalian malaria parasite. And it turns out we found the only native mammalian malaria parasite in the Americas, and the only malaria parasite from deer worldwide. So this discovery is really important. It reshapes our knowledge of the distribution of malaria parasites worldwide, and it reshapes in our knowledge of the malaria parasites across mammals. Um, it's pretty important also because we found an unknown pathogen right within our backyards. There's a lot more questions that we have to, left to answer after our study. One of them is finding out the origin of these malaria parasites in deer in the Americas. We also want to ask the question, what are the population impacts of these malaria parasites on deer? And also, what are the chances that these malaria parasites may jump into endangered animals, such as animals in human care? So this work was a team effort and came together with work by scientists across the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute including scientists, veterinarians, conservation ecologists, field biologists, and veterinary staff.